Welcome everybody. This is the info session for C cubed. And um, we're happy to have all of you here. I think close to half the folks who have registered have come over on time. We will start the program already and uh, hope that other folks trickle in and join. So thanks for attempting that poll. We have a lot of you who are curious, a lot of you, 50% of the applicant uh, uh, poll answers come from people who've already applied. So thank you for being here. Um, we look forward to chatting more with you. And for those who are unsure and still need clar clarifications, please ask away all your questions. Great. So welcome to C-Cubed, um, a really interesting, exciting program by Goethe Institute, ZKM, and supported by Be Fantastic. So I am Kamya Ramachandran, and you see Manan and Kartika here from the Be Fantastic team. We'd like to welcome all of you, especially uh, Amrita Nemwant and Christian Lolkas, Amrita from the Goethe Institute, Mumbai, and Christian from ZKM, who will be host, holding the fort today. So Amrita, I hand over the baton to you. Thank you, uh, Kamya. So first of all, uh, thank you everyone for taking the time out on this, this evening uh, to know more about uh, our project. And uh, if you have applied, then thank you for applying. And we look forward to having you uh, on this journey. So uh, just a brief um, background into how this uh, came about, because actually the way this project is structured is also quite different for the Goethe Institute itself. Uh, some of you who may have applied for other grants or the projects that we have um, supported would have realized that we generally um, look for like very sussed out applications, you know, where the, where the emphasis is more on the finished project than actually on the journey. While with this one, it, the journey is just as important as, um, as the end result. In fact, the end result is something that we are willing to see how it comes about but we would like uh, all the participants to exchange ideas, to collaborate and uh, see where, where it takes us. Uh, this, one of the reasons for this is of course, like uh, the pandemic where we realized that we also need to change the way in which we function. Um, I mean, we didn't want to just take all our projects online for the sake of it. So we decided to focus on a few, like a uh, few ones, which we felt would also survive online post the pandemic. And this was one of the projects that we decided to come up with uh, where, because the focus is on working in open source. Um, it allows a project to continue even after say C-Cube ends as an initiative. And um, yeah, I don't want to like uh, go too much about, um, you know, what open source is and stuff like that. I leave that to Christian who, who's, who's more informed about it. Christian works with uh, the ZKM. He does a lot of things there. He's a curator, he's an artist, but I think about all he's uh, a coder and he's just going to like briefly uh, tell us what it is. And then we can talk about um, how we will go about the project itself uh, in the next few months. Uh, Christian? Uh, thank you very much. Um, so, um... Yeah, I, I have one small technical problem, but I should be able to share my screen in a moment. Yeah, okay. Oh, one moment. I need to share the other screen. Um, I have two screens, so it's a little bit complicated, but we'll get it running. Um, Okay, so I hope that you see my presentation now. It's a very short one, but I think that um, I just want to give a few examples uh, 
of uh, what open source could mean in terms of uh, a few examples and um, what uh, it implies in terms of how you could participate. Um, so maybe the idea would be to uh, start with uh, an open source project that maybe uh, most of you have already known, um, which is called OpenStreetMaps. So OpenStreetMaps is the idea that uh, unlike uh, providers like uh, Apple, Microsoft, or Google, you do not rely on companies or, or, or commercial data to build maps, but on communities. Um, this, uh, so the, the idea is that it is a common platform and people who uh, uh, live nearby a place can uh, draw maps and augment uh, and, 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 and add some detail to the map itself. Why would that be important? Um, well, uh, if you look at commercial systems like uh, Google Maps or Apple Maps, those obviously uh, show the highest amount of precision and information in spaces where there is uh, uh, a lot of potential for clients because at the end of the day, they want to earn money uh, and where they see the, the most return on investment for it. This means that uh, smaller uh, things, projects, communities, ideas, which are not connected to the uh, revenue making system of Apple or Google are less represented in the maps and the maps, for example, can lack detail at that position. Um, well, with projects like OpenStreetMaps, uh, local people and communities can actually um, really add the information that they want to see on it and that they care about and that is important for their peers on their map, uh, regardless of any kind of commercial motivations uh, by the system. So uh, in this case, um, OpenStreetMaps is a, could be seen as an open source project that also um, gives a, 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 is a tool for a better, an open society that is less dependent or an oriented uh, from from commercial players such as uh, map providers. This is one example. Um, the other example that I want to point out is uh, Wikidata, which is the uh, database backend for Wikipedia. Uh, so that most of the uh, information that you see, especially in those small panels next to uh, an article that you will open, is um, is not written by hand, but comes automatically from a database, uh, which is called Wikidata. So for example, the population of a town or uh, this kind of information will not be typed in the article directly, but in the database, which has the advantage that, for example, in all languages, if you change the attribute of a city, such as the citizens, this will be updated everywhere uh, without people having to do manual uh, tasks. Well, this means also that um, the, uh, you, you will have the chance to improve uh, the database's precision by adding your, your own content to it. Um, and eventually adding a lot of detail for, uh, for um, entities or objects that uh, previously have not caught the interest of everyone else because, um, uh, and on Wikidata there and on Wikipedia and on the internet itself, there is always the information is there because either someone wanted it or because someone put it there. Uh, the information itself does not appear on its own. And uh, therefore, if you want something that is uh, available on the net, uh, you either have to require it or you have to put it there. And, uh, uh, and I think open source itself is less about wanting things or requiring things uh, but more about putting things online so that everybody has it uh, has an easier uh, life and uh, uh, way of navigating through the data. Um, so there we come to the core open source is about access and sharing. And uh, this is, I think, one of the, the most things that um, the most important thing that uh, that is also the most difficult one in open source, which means that uh, you participate, it's not about showing your own work, it's not about presenting yourself, but it's about giving access to your knowledge and, uh, and, and giving something to someone else the same way that you, when you use different systems, 
uh, use resources from other people. And why, why is it important to understand that it's not presenting yourself, but sharing something? Because um, there, there is no point in having fear of uh, making mistakes. Um, often myself and, and others, I think, if they want to uh, publish things and open source things, they will be, you know, is it perfect? Uh, are things uh, the right way? Or should they maybe do it the other way around? Well, these are question, questions you can ask yourself if you do a presentation, if you hand in a CV, if you uh, print a book. Um, but uh, open source is not about uh, one particular day, like an opening of a museum where things have to be perfect on that day. And then afterwards, they don't change anymore. Um, because we are, uh, when we are also talking open source and communities, we are talking about things that evolve, about demands that change, about ideas and data that changes. So actually, there is never a start or a stop to what you do, which also means that um, it, is, it is more important that if you have published something and there is a mistake in it, then you correct it rather than holding it back until you think it's perfect. So it is important that, that you, the, 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 the image you give of yourself through open source and the way you communicate is more about how you react to changes uh, and less to how you present yourself or your projects in a total. And I think also this was a, a something very different for institutions like the ZKM and maybe also for the Goethe, that uh, until now, when, when, when the museum or an institution does a project, everything is, 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 is perfect for the day of the exhibition. And then it stays there for a half a year, and then it disappears again, and everybody has seen it. Um, but we want to uh, have something that is more, more about we take something that is going on and improve it in terms of a continuous improvement. And we focus more on how we improve things and how we move forward uh, and less about the, uh, about the total image of it, right? So um, uh, it, it's, uh, let's say it's, it's less important to be perfect, it's more important to correct yourself uh, uh, in a very efficient way. Um, maybe, uh, before before we can move to some questions or other things, also often I get the question, how can you participate in open source? Um, well, open source is not only about um, uh, about writing software. Obviously, open source has been become very known by by open source software itself, but um, open source uh, is more of a mindset. So obviously, if you can write software, you can participate by writing code, by writing software by providing technical support or these kind of things like everyone knows. But um, the same way, uh, I mean, art itself alone would be useless if there would be uh, no uh, museums or other institutions around and the same goes for code and, and, and technology. So uh, for every good tech idea, uh, there also, there will be a need for design, for concepts or organizations. Um, so if uh, that are equally important, by the way, um, I mean, code itself is just a, a technical tool that at the end makes sense through a design and through a concept. Um, therefore, uh, also, if, if uh, one wants to participate and cannot code, can also do design, can also do uh, uh, these other kind of things. And what is also important, if we uh, look at the aspect of communities, is uh, talking to others. Um, because it could be that you want to do a nice project, but your city does not publish uh, the right amount of data for it. Uh, it could be that you, uh, you, you have data, but the, the, you cannot use it due to licensing issues. And in most cases, uh, it's, um, it is not complicated, but it, it takes a lot of time um, talking to these kind of uh, uh, owners of data and players in terms of institutions. Uh, and therefore, this is also something that can be, uh, that is very important in open sources that actually connecting and networking in that term. Um, the idea is that everybody does a little bit of everything so that those people talking to institutions also understand the needs about software engineers um, and, and back and forth. And this is something that is 
best done by uh, just trying it out. So um, it's good to have a, a, a little bit of experience in, in all of these three fields in terms of providing technical support, providing ideas or connecting. Um, but if, for example, someone lacks uh, experience in writing software and has the other two, then that's not a problem because I mean it's 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 not a race with the finish point. Then we'll just you'll we'll just learn it the same way someone else learns it as well. And that is I think the core of 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 exchanging and connecting together and and doing the first steps. Um, when I started with open source, I did not. Uh, uh, I was very young, and I think the the topic was not. Um, very well spread so i did not have much help uh but i envy all other people who start with it now that have the support uh that can tell you uh this is the steps you need to do and don't be afraid so this is something also that that uh the idea of helping each other and going these steps together is important to the concept of open source uh and that would be uh i think the core elements, but I would be very interested if they are some questions or remarks to the presentation. Thank you, Christian. Um, so to the folks here, we will open it up for conversation and questions right now. Mihir, it looks like you've asked a question. Would you like to unmute yourself and ask it? Um, hi. Uh, yeah, I, should I just read out my question again? Or do I need to explain it further? I, yeah. I think Christian would understand. I, I did not get the question due to... The, the question was, are we making a distinction between free software and open source software? Uh, free software is something that you can use without paying, but it uh, does not mean that oh. you can that, that, that you no, can that's... see it. Um, so, so free software itself um, is is something. So the thing is, open source software doesn't have to be free, and free software doesn't have to be open source. Um, open source uh, is a, is a concept that actually you can you can participate or you can also see what other people are doing so it could be for example that government entities open source part of their software so you can for example the same way you can watch uh, voting counts during an election you can also watch software that uh, provides services for your government that provides services for a company so that would be an example of, of open source that is not free the other way around um there are many softwares that are uh, actually free but not open source. I think an older one that would be was, for example, Winamp or uh, WinZip or WinWar. These softwares are free but are not open source. Um, this is a this is a, a more of a complicated discussion what op open source actually means because I think that um, there is a very technical term which means that open source means you can look at the source code. But open source uh, for me and I think also part of this project means that. Uh, uh, the entire ecosystem of participation belongs to it. Um, just making an open source software and have someone look at it without allowing him to participate, allowing him to modify it, it's technically open source, but it would not correspond to the mindset uh, of, 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 the open, of the modern open source definition, I would say. So to come back to your question, what the difference is, I think that open source software allows you to participate and also to 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 uh, add what you want to it to it in terms of you can you can not just look at it but you can also enhance it or adapt it which is not possible with free software i, I was referring to richard stallman and his famous saying free speech not be there um where because as, as far as i understood not not free in terms of uh, monetary. As in, in open source software, you could take software and change the license, right? But in free, you can't do that. But it's still the source is still open. Is what I understood. Yeah, um, I understand. Yeah, if you if you're referencing to Stallman, um, uh, I mean, as you as you know, there is no clear path to it, and I would also not put a clear distinction between what 
what there is of an understanding of free software because um uh i think that the 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 the, the views of, of mr stallman are very good but uh, are not always applicable especially if uh, dealing with institutions and uh, where you need a kind of uh, uh, another kind of flexibility that would that uh, in terms of that so um I, I think it's always good to find a middle ground in between between what what we think of of, of free software of we want to define it and I think that also depends on on the participants um so it is it is loosely defined for now uh, and because it's it's not about it's not about us wanting to set a, a, a very clear idea of what free software means it's about uh, that if someone wants to participate and uh, move uh, along in the free software, then we will find a way to make it work with our resources as well. Yeah, and I guess there's a follow up question to that saying that uh, BGA is who I see. Are we focusing only on open source software or other creative projects which use existing digital tools? but do not involve developing the solution. Um, so I, I guess you partially answered it, uh, Christian. So it's not only focusing on open source software, but then the other part of creative projects that use existing digital tools. Yeah, I mean, uh, you, you could also, um, uh... Yeah, I mean, it's open source. If, if we are talking about things that are not code related, then it, it applies to the mindset. Uh, I mean, open, it's a very technical term, but you can also uh, uh, open source uh, resources that you use for your artwork. If you, for example, are doing digital art with data, um, but you're using a, a paid software for it, then uh, obviously you could uh, open source your data sets. In terms of publish them, make them available for other artists to use them. Yeah, so essentially it's creating this creative community that is kind of offering stuff to the kitty, offering materials to the open source kitty. Is that fair to say, uh, Christian? Yes. So it's it's about like uh, uh, the, the 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 sharing component and uh, making the exact uh, making it accessible and also sharing it in a way that it allows others to build upon it, or not only that others can build upon it, but together with others you can build on something common. So it's it's not about publishing something and then leaving it, but setting it there and say, well, that like now everybody can work with it and we can do something together. Right. So just to clarify with everybody, we will take another five to seven minutes to discuss this idea of how open source is being framed. I do see a lot of questions on the chat that have to do with the programmatic elements and we'll go into that next, but we would just like to clear up any confusions or bring out, attend to any conversations around this idea of what is open source. So if there are any other questions or comments, please feel free to unmute yourself or put it in the chat. Is everybody okay with the sense of open source that the program is espousing? Okay. Okay, so Amrita, maybe it's time then to go into more of the programmatic elements and and then other other thoughts might come up. So just very quickly, everybody you've asked for timelines and deadlines, uh, the link that you were given um, in the chat will take you straight to the page. The deadline has been extended to 15th. 15th. You have yeah. four days, 15 hours, 33 minutes left. Um, 
And we'll quickly run through this component called the methodology, which should answer a lot of your questions. So participants are expected to carefully attend the, so there will be a series of um, events, programs online organized, and you are encouraged to attend as many of those programs as possible. Um, somewhere in November, after three sessions, participants would seek collaboration from partners within the cohort. So a lot of you are coming in with ideas. Some of you don't have ideas at all. And it, this is crafted as a, as a space that allows for these kinds of uh, interactions, collaborations, evolutions to happen within the space. So if you have an idea already, fabulous, bring it in. If you don't have an idea, you're welcome, as long as you have the mindset and the enthusiasm for this. And within the, within the program, we'll help you collaborate and connect with other folks with whom you can work the idea or evolve an idea through. Um, so the first pitch session is organized for mid-November. And Amrita, I'll let you jump in here. No, I mean, um, so basically, yeah, what we decided was uh, since it's a year long uh, initiative, we'll have the first pitch session in November where uh, we encourage you to, like Kamya said, uh, come up with um, ideas. Or even if you have an existing project that you feel um, you've been able to develop further through this initiative, um, to pitch it to us as. Uh, to the Goethe Institute and uh, we could support its production or implementation or like we can in, in the best possible way. And we do have some funds allocated for it. And I see a question that says, do we need a working prototype to be shown? Um, that completely depends on the project. So the aim is that we will be in constant conversation with you during like from say, from now to November to see how best you can pitch your ideas and, and um, work with us. Uh, because for us, it's not just about you completing a project, right? We also want to see how you can take this further, whether it can sort of, you know, be implemented or uh, included, not implemented, but included in some of our other projects that we do, because as you know, we are a global organization and working in different fields and it's always possible. It's also about working efficiently in the future, right? Like also giving all these projects maximum exposure in the coming days and stuff like that. So yeah, that's that's pretty much how the pitch is gonna be. Um, we will support a few ideas now in November and then we'll also have a second pitch in March um, so that pe people who need more time to work on their ideas uh, have so. And yeah. it's not obligatory to have a project proposal? No, not at all. Um, I mean, the idea is to also have fun and learn something. So we are also happy that if you say that, hey, I just like was part of this fantastic community and maybe in a year or two, forget CQ, but I do see myself, um, you know, collaborating with X, Y, and Z. Um, that's also fine. It's uh, literally just about working together and seeing what happens. It's it's. It's an experiment in a way, we can say that. And yeah. And there is a potential of uh, presenting the work at the end of this year long. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I meant. Like, um, you know, that it, it gets uh, included in some of our projects, um, maybe depending on what comes out, uh, we, we, we will have like some kind of a public presentation of the work that's uh, come out of CQ. I mean, the possibilities are numerous also because like the way we want the cohort to work, we are not setting any standardized guidelines about how they should work or what they should produce. So we are literally um, as open to working with you as the ideas that you have in, to put it very simply. <laughs> I, I, does that help? <laughs> yeah. And do we need coding, Amrita? Do we need to know coding or technology to be part of this? No, as uh, Christian said, like you just need an interest in either. So if you know coding, great, but it's not messy because it's ultimately about collaborating. So um, we just had three premises, right? Like you want to work collaboratively. You have an interest in civil society concerns or 
or technology. So any one of the three, um, that's fine. Um, Maybe I would I would uh, yeah. join in at this point. Uh, as uh, it, it means collaborating, yes, but I would go one step further. It means collaborating, but it also means that you accept that someone else modifies the shared work. And I don't say modifies your work because the moment you share it, it is actually a little bit less of your own work. And this uh, this can be a difficult step to, to go in terms of you can be, uh, it's okay to be scared, it's okay to be scared in terms of like, what happens with my work, do I lose control? And maybe the answer of it is yes, partly, but maybe no. Uh, and um, it is also about taking you to these steps together as part of a project uh, and also showing you that like uh, publishing something does not mean losing control or does not mean giving something away for free. But um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so traditional, art, traditional artists with no coding experience are welcome. Uh, you need a mindset to be interested in engaging in this project. You could be any cultural producer who wants to like just experiment with this kind of working methodology and just need to have the mindset to be part of this. And that's, that's fine. You could be a poet, a writer, an artist, it doesn't matter. Right. And I, I think it would be also an, an, an important aspect to extend the idea of open source beyond coding, because I think um, projects that support open source coding alone, there are many, many, many projects around that, that, give you, that give you support if you publish only open source software. Um, but I think there are very few initiatives that actually support this, this intersection between arts and tech. Right, because obviously, I always think that the, the the coder stops his work at the moment the artist starts, and uh, obviously there will be uh, uh, as we 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 in the chat messages some people said that they they have less of of a coding experience and more of an artistic experience. Uh, I I see it and we see it as as important as uh, so being. Creative actually is also coding. To if if you if you've never written software, you don't know it, and it's totally fine. But to write software, you have to be extremely creative. So actually, the process, um, the process is the same because there is no right solution, or not always a right solution to a software task, uh, and uh, goes the same for an artistic task or an artistic development. You have to ask yourself questions like, does this does that fit better the situation? Or does, is this better for what I want to do? And uh, so the questions are the same. And, uh, and we believe that the sharing also applies both ways. Uh, how that actually goes and how if you are, a, a, I would say, a classical artist, or even if you're a media artist, how the sharing works, well, let's find out. <laughs> but uh, the, the, the most important thing is that, the, as Amruta also said, that the, the, the mindset is there. Um, and uh, we will find a platform to share it. Um, Christian, somebody asks for examples of a few projects that involve creative arts. And I assume creative arts and open source is what you're trying to get at? So, um, I mean, create. There are like a lot of uh, libraries actually uh, that uh, are used by creative artists and and uh, and software um, uh, like processing or open frameworks, which are tools that are used by 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 a lot of creatives and especially or programming languages like R um, are very common with data artists and uh, and and yeah so. It, it could go both ways, right? There is there is one thing where coders actually try to find out what visually can be done with a chunk of code, but it could also go the other way around that someone presents something visually and you try to go the step back and see like how can how can something that has been created visually be inter or form formulated into code. 
Okay, I hope that answers your question. Ayati, you had a hand raised and you had a question as well. Would you like to unmute yourself and ask? Oh, hi, I just put it in the chat. Um, ah, okay. Go ahead and say it, let it be a conversation. <laughs> yeah, sure. I just wanted to know, like um, Amruta mentioned that uh, by the end, if there is an end product, um, it can get integrated into whatever Gweta Institute is doing. And I wanted to ask if the open source nature of it would still be retained in that case. Yes, because what I meant was say, if we have an exhibition or we are having some kind of a public screening or stuff like that. So of course the, the nature of the project does not change just because um, we've said, because so just like CQ, we have other projects like say music and activism or you know other exhibitions and stuff. And like if something gets developed that fits perfectly in those projects, um, it could be shown or the, um, yeah, got whatever. It. Yeah. So maybe maybe to give a, a, an answer to to the other previous question about the project and involves uh, creative arts. Uh, I I don't know. Maybe it's very obvious, but all gaming projects. Um, uh, in the in the gaming scene and, and writing and, and, and computer games, there is an extreme interlap between the tech part and the storytelling part, uh, because obviously you want to uh, you want to challenge the technical possibilities you have to tell the most awesome story. Let it be from the complexity or from the visual part or from the audio part. Um, at that game, we have an exhibition a gameplay that that talks about the art in in computer games. But it only, does not only talk about the visual or the storytelling aspect, but also the combination with the technical aspect. And that could, be, for example, be that um, if if you if you are working in the the field of design and, and visual arts, then um, it is uh, can be very helpful for game developers if there are open source sets of tiles of graphic elements that can be then integrated into games easily. Uh, because these have to have a certain format, these have to have a certain type, uh, but it's extremely difficult for someone who writes software to draw these kind of things. But it's very easy to explain what he needs and someone else then can adapt his art in a form that can be shared and used with someone else. Uh, in, in the computer game uh, genre, this, these are often called tile sets or sprites, which are a, a predefined sets of graphics that are then used in games. Shreyans, I see your hand is up, but I'll just take one more question that came in earlier. Um, Shavik asks, does any project that's pursued, say in November, need to be limited to the, to the possible collaborators from within the group? So can they pitch for projects that they're working on or beyond of the C cubed group that will stand funding? Well, uh... I would say it's not like off the table, like it's, it's preferable, but that does not mean that we completely take it off. Like I said, it's about the methodology that you use. So of course it would be nice if you find collaborators within the cohort, but um, if not, and the project still falls within the very wide parameters of how we are working, then we are not going to take funding off the table. Great chance, you want to go? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I wanted to know what are the limits of the kind of projects that might be proposed, be, uh, like uh, C-Cube uh, sense of creativity code and community. I like I kind of interpret that as like basically an extension into uh, society. And there are many uh, sensitive issues that uh, that uh, uh, that in that that uh, that are probably not often talked about in society or there are many stories within uh, within communities that are not spoken about and i just wanted to know what was the is there any restriction on the kind of uh, ideas or stories that can be proposed uh, yeah well one of the main cornerstones is that you try and come up with the uh projects that have a civil society component to it. So we are not restricting it in terms of this is what you can say and this is what you can't say. As long as it's done in, in a sensitive and right, right manner, it's, it's fine by us. 
and uh, maybe a, a good approach from and I, I i understand that obviously uh, in each community the problems are very different but a, a good approach i think is to uh, if there is an issue that is uh, uh, that is not spoken about and that requires more um more attention and then what to bring forward then one idea is to find I don't say that a technical solution always helps, but uh, uh, maybe uh, try as part of it uh, using the idea of open source and sharing to maybe uh, support a solution to the project itself, right? So uh, it could be that, uh, I mean, at the root of many problems often is a, is a lack of communication and the lack of information if we talk about uh, uh, civil problems and society problems. And uh, uh, this is, uh, uh, it's maybe less about solving one individual problem, but uh, giving more and more tools that these problems can be easily solved at the community level by leveraging tools that have been developed globally. Um, so uh, this, is, this is an important part and it gives you a tool set to actually realize what you want to do. And uh, if you need uh, help in terms of developing uh, or adapting a platform or a tour, tool, um, then, uh, then, then this can be part of it. A very basic example can be uh, if there is a, a many, uh, many communities want to self-host their software um, in terms of because they have more freedom to use it if it's hosted on their own infrastructure. Um, and one issue can be, for example, if, if you are um, much software being developed in, in Europe uh, or maybe in the US, uh, there might be missing translation for local languages. There might be missing relationships or concepts that do not apply to the issues you have at the local level. So one solution can be to adapt those softwares in terms of making them either by through language compatible to what you need um, or uh, by, by the structure compatible what you need. But you give this improvement at the global level so that you can solve your problem but everybody else can also solve, solve a problem that might be similar. And, and this goes back and forth, and therefore then these issues could be resolved. Thank you. Any other questions? Sumana, you've asked about, can one write about the experience in the press? I think by all means, right? <laughs> yeah, go for <laughs> it. <laughs> um, there was a, a, previously a, a, a few messages ago, um, uh, a question about how to handle a commercially available software or the, the, the clash between a software that has been paid uh, or not. So, I mean, obviously you, can, you, you cannot open source software that doesn't belong to you, but um, uh, open sourcing your art does not mean that you lose uh, uh, a source of income to it, right? So, for example, from the Creative Commons licensing, you can share your work to be used by others by limiting the use to non-commercial things. Um, so you say, well, you can use my art, you can work on it, but you cannot make money from it. Which does not mean that we, they will never be able to make money from it. Um, they can still contact you and ask for a license so that um, so that this can be resolved. But uh, you can work on commercial uh, commercially available products, or if you are you're depending on on some project that you want to sell, that does not clash with the idea of open sourcing it, because uh, at the end the question is what do you sell. Uh, if you write a software that does generative art, do you sell the software or do you sell your art at the end of the day? Just having the software does not make your art less valuable or not. Um, so the, these are very detailed questions, but in general, I would say that um, uh, you can work both. And, and I mean, otherwise much company, uh, all those companies would not be interested in open source if it would cut their revenue. So this is a very common common issue, and there are many solutions to that. There is not one solution, but as there are always many solutions. So uh, don't don't fear uh, any issues of that kind. Sundrita Bhattacharya. Yeah, my audible. 
yeah so uh, i got to know about this program just a couple of days ago so i haven't had the time to go through all the details uh, so i apologize if there's some information that's on the website but i'm asking you again so as i understand it i'm supposed to uh, pitch an idea of my own uh, in the overlap of the fields of technology culture and communities and uh, and there'll basically be a, a grant or something of the sort that will be awarded but uh, i also understand this is supposed to be inherently collaborative so what i uh, i'm missing is uh, where does the personal idea and uh, you know gel in with the collaborative project idea and will i be working on my own idea or will i be working on something else or who decides that how do we so that's the first question if uh, somebody wants to answer that i i'll wait to ask the second question um I, I, at, at the core it's, it's it it goes in the same direction maybe with a with a small difference um it's uh it's it's less about pitching your own project it's about more that you say i have a project that i want to share and i want to share because it should get bigger or uh, uh it, other people should want to participate um so it's 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 less of uh, pitching your own idea but maybe pitching your own motivation um and uh, especially if if you have never or very uh, rarely uh, interacted with open source uh, or with other communities or working on collaborative uh, ideas then the idea is that with this project we we support this collaborative work itself uh, obviously i mean if you uh, uh, how uh, how much you work on your own idea or not at the end uh, is how much you contribute um, if you contribute a lot, then uh, the project uh, or the thing you do will, will follow most of your idea. But you could also say, well, I have an idea, I started with it, and but I want to work with others on it and uh, then uh, uh, allow a greater interaction. So it's, it's uh, um, interaction and working together is, uh, is obviously at the core of the idea. But how much interaction you allow itself, that could also be finely tuned. Huh? Um, this can also be there. There are like, can be can be some details in terms of you say, well, I have my my own personal work, which is like at the core of what I do, um, but I want to open source a part of it, which is also possible. Um, so it's 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 not about what you do in terms of from from your perspective, like do I do everything or not? Uh, it's more about what what do you share with others. And also to say, Sunita, that there are two components to this entire program. One of it, you might have somebody in here who's just really not interested in the grant or in seeking money, but just wants to amplify this community. So wants to be here, contribute with discussions uh, and other sources, just to make sure that this community is growing, debating, discussing, getting stronger in and of itself. So there's definitely one one aspect of the program which is seeking to bring together a lot of like-minded people and keeping them interested through the year and then there are there is also this additional thing of please collaborate think pitch pitch an idea or put an idea in the kitty and have other people come in and round it up and take it to the next place so it's kind of yeah uh, it has both these agendas. Uh, am I right, Amrita? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, so the thing is, like we haven't said, like it's not if if you don't have your own project to submit, you can also like give us a link to something that's inspired you in the open source realm. I'm just going to call it that. Um, so it's literally about working together. I mean, like I said earlier, it's about having the right attitude and then just being open to experiment and exchange and like see where it goes um that's what it is so um, there, there's Thanks. another component maybe that has been uh, uh not not highlighted yet but it's not so obvious i think and and i think i can speak for the Goethe as well that participating in in open source is something that has been very uncommon until now for museums and institutions such as Goethe uh, or the zkm or other cultural institutions uh so for us it is also important to step out from the usual routine that we have of 
making a you note know, like uh, there is an exact description you apply you do exactly that and then it's finished and then it's gone and uh and it's also stepping away from the idea that uh, uh, the institution or the museum is at the core of something that happens, uh, but more that it participates as well in a community. Uh, because the, the ZKM uh, has been for a long time working on the idea that the museum is, is part of this, is, is not like the center of knowledge, but is something that helps other people to gain more knowledge. So actually you don't you don't come to the museum to just enjoy art but you come to the museum to learn something and to get educated and the museum therefore supports you in what you want to do and uh, uh, this is also something that that from our side uh, is, is is quite new um and and therefore also uh, our uh, it's important for us to support a development that is already ongoing and not forcibly to create something new because museums and cultural institutions create new things all day. Um, but we want to support the existing projects or emerging projects and get those, maybe give those the, the support they need to gain momentum or size. Yeah, I mean, that's what like um, I meant when I said that, you know, if, if any of you have applied for grants like with institutions like Kyoto or whatever, it's usually projects need to be extremely well sussed out with a very clear end goal, at least on paper being clarified by the applicant. And here we are not asking you to apply with a project for, for which is like completely sussed out, but like just to work together and see what you can build up. And, you know, if you don't want to eventually like, um, part of the grant process, that's also fine. It's, it's literally about, Okay. There's a dog there, but it's good. Um, <laughs> maybe he agrees with me. I don't know. Um, so, um, yeah, so it's, it's basically that. And uh, this is a very new way for us because uh, it, it kind of stemmed, like I said, from the pandemic where, you know, I think we also realized that we need to change the way we look at things. It's not possible people also need to like work differently there are different ways of working and uh, we should experiment with that as well as an institution so yeah it's it's exactly what christian said yeah thanks a lot uh, clarifies a lot of my questions i personally also did not come with the uh, knowledge of the grant working on grant and so on um, I wasn't very aware that Gurkha has a lot of these uh, projects and I was associated with Gurkha a long time back. But I am uh, uh, a science researcher and I am uh, into open science and this concept of um, open source stuff and uh, you know art and culture uh, got my attention and I wanted to be a part of it. So my motivation is that. So since I'm involved with other things in my life, uh, how much time or how much uh, effort would I have to put in if I were just an onlooker and I wanted to participate in the discussions only, not be part of the project as such. So that's my next second question. Well, um, the thing is we, uh... So we have tried to take into account that people will have like their real jobs, so to speak, um, going on as well. So we've kept the participation like, um, or, or rather the compulsory participation to a minimum. I think in the course of year, if I'm not wrong, it's about 36 hours. It's- I think it's 30. 30 hours, sorry, my, my bad. But it's 30 hours and, uh, yeah, and the rest is like pretty much up to you. I mean, say if if you decide to like, uh, you know, it's your own project at the end of the day or your something that you want to say for yourself as well. So you will find the extra time that you may need to develop something further. If not, you could like still do the mandatory 30 hours and see what you gain from like the sessions that we have and work with that, so. All right, thanks. We are five minutes away from closing the session on time, but I think there was one last question on how many projects will finally be funded. 
Um, to be honest, we haven't decided yet. It really depends on what we get. Um, we're not, like I said, uh, we are not going with any predefined, uh, you know, usual rules as such. So. Yes, this is a rather unusual space. Um, we hope yeah. folks will jump on this bandwagon. You don't see uh, an open, open source, but open space like this to work with, experiment with. Um, even in terms of programming, we cannot tell you off the bat what is going to happen every month for the next year. And that's only because it depends on who in the room applies, who gets in, and it's going to be really shaped and based on the needs of the group at that point of time and the needs of the projects at certain points of time. So, um, yeah, it is going to be a really interesting experiment and I think all the institutions behind this can't wait to start off. Yes, and, and one thing is it'll definitely be a safe space. So we would really like you to come and interact and really gain something, hopefully, but I'm pretty sure you will gain something from this interaction in your practice. Great, so please feel free to drop us any other questions. We're on um, social media. In, I think all three institutions are pushing this on their social media, so you can drop us that. You can you also have coordinator at jaga.in and Manan, if you could just put that in the chat for any other questions that you need to reach out to the Jaga team. I guess it's not too late to say Be Fantastic is birthed by Jaga, <laughs> Bangalore's old and, um, you know, 10 year old NGO from Bangalore, but yeah. So coordinator jaga.in for any other questions that you may have. Uh, uh, just, one last, uh, just one last thing, which I think shouldn't take much of your time. Is there any upper limit on number of people uh, that you will be taking on board? No, no. Simple answers. No. <laughs> No, uh, also, uh, I think the question was there before, uh, collectives can also apply. Huh? It's, it's not only limited yeah. to individuals, but also collectives. Um, and I think that if you might, if you apply as an individual, you will start as an individual, but more or less end as a collective, um, because uh, that's, the, that's the core idea of it. Great. Thank you, Christian. And thank you, Amrita. Thank you. And thank and, you uh, and good night to everybody who's here. Please enjoy filling in the application. We do have one last poll for you. Um, and hope to see you on the other side. Yes, absolutely. Looking forward. Then, uh, yeah. Oh yes, good afternoon in Germany. Sorry, Julius. Good evening in India. <laughs> like... Yay, we have 26 out of 33 who are going to apply now. That's great, thank you. Um, and for those who need more time, please take your time. No hurry, we have a few days left. Pass it on to friends who you think might be interested. Cool.